Okay, we've got our park designed in SOLIDWORKS with our awesome logo mapped to the surface of it. What I need you to fundamentally understand is that models are great. However, in manufacturing, you need to have drawings. You need to have essentially and basically this right here. What we need to do now is to take the part that we designed, our copper uh, wedge that we've created, and we now have to create a drawing like this one. And so let's go through the process of learning how to create not only just a drawing, but to create a custom um, template so that as we create future drawings, the process is sped up dramatically. And what I mean by that is a custom uh, border sheet is that we come in here and we preload all of this information here. And so all we have to do is change the part number, the weight, uh, the material type, and place our drawing, do our dimensions, and we're done. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to create this custom template uh, for our drawing sheet. So let's go back to SolidWorks and we'll get over here. Now it's going to look like we're going to create our actual drawing, but in fact we're going to be creating that custom tutorial. So let's get started. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and make a drawing from a part in an assembly. So SOLIDWORKS is going to go out and it's going to launch the drawing capability that it has, which is very, very powerful. And again, it was important for you to have gone ahead and made sure that you set your uh, drawing type to an ANSI drawing. So that way it pulls up the ANSI drawing landscape as opposed to ISO. So we're going to go ahead and accept that. We're going to take that and open it up. Now what SOLIDWORKS is going to try to do is going to place all the views of the drawing. So I can come over here and grab one of these views like right here and I can come up here and place the, the top view. It should come up and put the top view in. There it is. And I'll come over here and I'll put the front view in. I'll go at a diagonal and I'll put the isometric in. Now that's all great. But again, our goal with this is to go ahead, hit escape. Our goal is to go ahead and create a custom sheet down here and save that as a um, save it as a template that we can use over and over again to automate and speed up the process of our drawing creation. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and delete these views. I don't need those in here because again we're creating a custom template for our drawing sheet. Delete all that and we'll delete this as well. Now, so we have a blank sheet here. Now it's based off part number one. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and do a right mouse click on the second thing here and edit sheet format. Now inside of here are some hidden fields that you will have to know where to look to find. And so we're going to start first with uh, this field up here, this open space. Now I want you to notice from your manual drafting how none of the uh, text here sits on the bottom of the uh, border sheet field or the top of the border sheet field. Some of you are typing and writing and doing everything to fill up all that. You don't do that. So what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to drag my mouse across so I find it's that A pop up. So I'll click on that and it brings up a text field. Now not all of these have text fields in them, but that's okay. We'll fix that. So we're going to start editing and customizing this border sheet. So what I'm going to do for mine is I'm going to say, click on this and I'm going to key in plat uppercase design actually let's go back and look at our drawing sheet I can't remember what I put in there plat industrial design okay let's go with that so we'll go back to SolidWorks and we're gonna say um, plat industrial design oh my gosh this thing is so big it takes out and goes across the field that's okay let's not worry about that now I want to change the font I like to use a slanted font and I like to use one that doesn't have Sarah. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to scroll up here to the top and I'm going to find a pretty common font that we use all the time. Uh, Arial is a good one. Uh, Calibri Light is a good one. Let's use Calibri Light. Okay, so it did that and now I'm going to click off to the side here and now you see my text fits all in here. That's good. Now, before I change the title here, I'm going to come over to these fields. I'm going to roll up on that using my middle mouse button. And I'm going to find a field. Ah, there it is. Double click on that. And I'm going to key in R period plat. Now I'm going to copy all that. Just highlight all that and do a control C to copy. I'm going to come down below this, find the next field. 
double click on it, control V to paste, come down here to the next field, double click on it, and control V to paste, come down here, double click on that, control V to paste, and that says that I checked the drawing and the engineering approved, manufacturing approved, and quality assurance has uh, also signed off on it. So we'll put that in there. Now remember that when you're talking about using uh, title blocks and title sheets when you create your drawings, the first thing an employer or a manufacturer will look at is always the title block. They'll kind of scan the drawing, but the first thing is they gravitate to is the title block and make sure that there's information in there they need to manufacture this product. Now in this one here, I'm going to key in a date of 11 slash 12 slash 20. I think that will fit in there. Yeah, it does. So what I'm going to do now is double click on that. I'm going to copy that text, go down here in the next field. Now you would come back and change this as you design your parts to the dates that you actually design the part on. That would be the prudent and correct thing to do. So that way you have an engineering and a documentation trail as to when you actually designed a drawing and created a drawing. But I'm gonna put 11, 12 in there right now. So when I come back to this, all I have to change is just a couple numbers. All right, that looks good. Okay, now let's scroll out here again and I'm going to come in here in this field right here and I'm going to put in three X's. I'm going to use uppercase. Uh, four is fine. I'll use four. Double click on this. Copy that. Come down here to this, which is the finish because you always change the finish and the material type of the parts you make and accept that. Okay. Now over here, as I said, there wasn't a there, as I mentioned earlier, some of these fields don't have a text block. The comments is a classic one here. So I'll double click on comments. I'm going to come over here to the very end using my control arrow to the right. And I'm going to hit an enter. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to key in my three X's. Now I'm going to make those uh, six is fine. I'll just leave those there at that. Awesome. Okay. Now it looks pretty good. Now if you come over here to the side here, it says proprietary and confidential. You really want to fill that out because that lets you know, it, it, it basically establishes that this is your intellectual property, that you own this design, that you created this. And every company I've ever worked for or been involved with has always made sure that intellectual property is something they take extremely seriously for their designs. So that way, if you go into court, you can defend that, hey, this is my product, you copyrighted it, and hopefully win any kind of suit you have to bring against someone who is plagiarizing and stealing your work, plagiarizing your work and stealing your design. So I'm going to do a control Z again. I'm going to do a control C to copy that. I need that text. Okay. Come back over here using my middle mouse button to pan over and I'm going to double click on this. Now I may have to change something here because I can't quite remember how I did this in the past, but I'm going to highlight insert company name in here. Do a control V. Oh my goodness. It put that in there. It's ginormous. Let me just highlight that again set it back to uh, as low as it goes, it's, uh, it was eight, so I'll just key in six, and it put it in there. And I kind of want that to be highlighted, so I'm gonna bold that as well, so I put bold on it. Now, if you want to, you can go back and change the color, you can do whatever to emphasize it, hey, this is yours. So now what I'm gonna do is copy that text, and I have to go back and change it again, and I'm gonna come down here at the final spot and put in my name. All right, I'm gonna step over here to the side of this is, hit. Uh, hit my delete key so I can kind of orient that better. All right, that looks pretty good. Uh, let's roll out here and take a look at what we got. Now, if you're rolling out and you can't find something, just hit the F key and it'll zoom it right back up to what you need to see. All right, this is looking pretty good. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to pan over to here and scroll up right there. And let's go back and look at our drawing. Our drawing said SolidWorks part number one. That looks pretty cool. So we're going to use the same thing. So we'll go back over here to SolidWorks. Select on this. Select on this field. And it highlights it. I'm going to key in SolidWorks. Wow, that's big. Part. Uh, pound sign. I'm just going to do a space and put XX in there. Make sure that's uppercase XX. And probably should spell SolidWorks correctly. Now that's huge. Let's go ahead and make that smaller. I'm going to drop that down to 12. See what we got. Yeah, that looks a little better. 
and let's go back and look at our uh, our design SOLIDWORKS part one okay let's go back to SOLIDWORKS I see how they did that okay I'm gonna change that to SOLIDWORKS here let's highlight all that let's take it up to about 24 and see what we got Ooh, that's big but that actually works so I'm gonna take this and again and change that to Calibri light here it is and I'm going to uh, make it italics and it looks pretty good I'm gonna make sure that I hit delete and hit enter so that way it's stacked on top correctly that looks pretty good now I may take this this is the actual drawing uh, excuse me part model that I use I'm gonna scale that down to about 18 so that gives me some room so if I need to put down SLDPRT for the part number I'll do that uh, the field right here we're gonna say that is rev1 it's always important to put revs in or rev revisions now down here the text is is huge it goes over to sheet one of whatever so I'm gonna double click on this I'm gonna set that down to six I'll key in six here okay and then I'm gonna change that to XX whoops put that six in there hit the tab come down here and I'm gonna key in uh, XX and then I'm gonna hit space lowercase L excuse me lowercase LBS to, to designate that that's pounds okay cool now I'm gonna come back and edit that field later to know that it's uh, actually put in there and um, it's put in there to the right weight when I get the material properties off of the model itself so let's scroll out here let's hit the F key to fit it that looks pretty good I, I kind of like this so I'm gonna go ahead and right mouse click and get out of that and edit it and now what I'm gonna do is this is very important step here I'm gonna do a save as now it'll default and come up and say SOLIDWORKS drawing I don't want a SOLIDWORKS drawing I want a template so I'm gonna come down here and click on this and see where it says Dra drawing templates DRW DOT I'm gonna click on that and then it's gonna drop me over here to my templates folder and I'm gonna put in um, instead of part two I'm gonna put in here um, well I already got one set up up here it says ortho ISO I'm gonna say ortho make it the same case ortho hyphen ISO hyphen um, v2 for version 2 and I'm gonna save that templates are only predefined into views okay I'm say okay anyway and I save that so now I'm gonna go ahead and close this file out hit close and I'm gonna come back over here to my part drawing excuse me a part model and I'm gonna create a new drawing this time I'm gonna to try to call up that um, that template that I used and so what I'm gonna do is scroll down here I don't see it here so what I'm gonna do is browse and I'm gonna scroll down here and see if it's down somewhere in here and there's my part ortho ISO well I don't see the one I just created so let's just go ahead and get out of that and hit cancel okay and we'll hit cancel and we're gonna go ahead and close that view Okay, so it's not in there don't save it and now I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna create I'm gonna get out of this model altogether close this and let's see if our drawing template made it to the right location it may have not so I may have to move that so let's go ahead and create a new drawing and I'm gonna click drawing and see if it uh, let's go to advanced and there's my V2 that's the one I want to create okay so I'm gonna go ahead and hit uh, cancel out of that go over here and open up my recent file which is this guy and let's see if we can find that V2 one again okay ah there it is V2 I guess I had to close it out and reback open back uh, open it back up again all right so there it is so what's important to note now is that all of my information is keyed in here well let's go ahead and create the drawing real quick put in my views put in this and we'll put the ISO in and I'm gonna adjust all this here in a minute but we're gonna stop this tutorial for now hit check mark and we're gonna come back to this and do the extra work but now you see how to create a custom uh, template so you can automate the process of your drawings